It's time to make our first rain check of the season. Ontario Rain Manager of Communications and Content Jared Schaffron is going to join us to talk about Brant Clark, Quentin Byfield, Alex Turcott, Martin Kromiak, just to name a few. We'll also talk about the rain season so far under former LA Kings assistant coach Marco Sturm. All that coming up on this edition of Locked on LA Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. At last check, we were almost at 890 subscribers, looking great to get to our goal of 900 by the end of November. So thank you guys all for your support, for subscribing and uh, liking the YouTube channel. My name is Eddie Garcia. I'm your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've been in sports media for almost 30 years. The past, past 20 plus years have been at the Fox Sports Radio Network, also co host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the last 16 years, and a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. And yes, this is locked on LA Kings, but an important part of the Kings organization is their AHL affiliate in the Inland Empire, and that would be the Ontario Reign. And joining us to give us all the news on the team and its players would be their manager. Uh, of communications and content, and that would be Jared Shaffron. Hey, Jared, how are you today? Hey, Eddie, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for your time. I'm really excited to find out what's going on with the rain uh, so far this season. Uh, And I guess start off with the obvious. um, How has the season been going so far? I I believe they're 8, 5, and 1, tied for second in the Pacific Division. Um, How has the season been going so far? Well, uh, it was a great start. The Rain won six of their first seven. Uh, They were on a roll to start November, really through October. uh, Everything was looking great. Uh, And then a win, a shutout win to start November in Colorado against a really good Colorado Eagles team. Uh, And then they lost five straight. So it hasn't been as fun uh, to be Mm. part of the Rain uh, rain train, as we say, uh, over the last couple of weeks. And you know, it's not like the team's getting blown out. Uh, there's a lot of close games that they were falling short to. They, they lost the game in a shootout in San Jose. They did win yesterday. Uh, and so, or sorry, two days ago. Uh, and so that's a Sunday win against Henderson. So that wrapped up a home and home with the Henderson Silver Knights last weekend. And that was the first win since that shutout in Colorado for the rain. So I think, uh, you know, definitely a, a great start. Always good to, to get off to a good start. And then the good thing about this team is the defense has actually been pretty good. Uh, Last year with the rain, the defense was the problem. They were scoring tons of goals, but they were also having issues on defense. This year, the defense has been great, and the scoring's dried up a little bit. But for me, that's a positive because there's so much talent in the lineup that I kind of feel like the scoring is going to come. It just just had – there was a lot of changes in the lineup, which I'm sure we'll talk about. And everyone kind of had to get back on the same page and get back uh, in in some different roles because some guys who were playing maybe top six roles uh, weren't as as useful when we have Quentin Byfield, Alex Turcott, some of the high end prospects that that came down to Ontario and uh, and so then kind of took a little bit of a different scope for everybody to get in a different position, different role. So I think there's an adjustment period and hopefully uh, with the win three to two against Henderson on Sunday that kind of levels things out and the team can get rolling again. Well, one player that you've had recently uh, is a player that a lot of Kings fans are excited about and curious about, and that would be defenseman Brant Clark uh, sent down to Ontario on a conditioning assignment. It's interesting, the kind of the wheeling and dealing that goes along with him playing nine games so far at the NHL level and now able to send him to the AHL uh, to get some extra games in as well. Um, How how has he looked in his time there? I know he scored his first uh, AHL goal the other night. Yeah, on Sunday, first first AHL goal, and he also had an assist on a goal by Tyler Madden. I think he looks great. I think he looks like someone who could really be benefit, who could benefit playing in the AHL full time. Mm. Uh, I think, you know, we've seen that he's capable of playing in an NHL lineup. He's played nine games for the Kings, but the Kings are a team that's trying to compete at the top of the Pacific division. And, you know, I think, frankly, he probably could use more time at the AHL level. It's almost uh you know it's just it's tough for him in his development that politics is kind of getting in the way at this point the nhl chl agreement 
uh, states that he really can't play in the AHL. It's kind of a surprise that he's even in the AHL at this point. And to his credit, he's taking the whole thing in stride. He, he's very positive, smiling, having a good time, enjoying himself, happy to be in the lineup, happy to be around all, all of his teammates and around the rain players. So, you know, I give him a ton of credit. Uh, you know, there's not many times when someone gets sent down to the AHL and they still have a smile on their face. And they're still happy. I mean, these guys, they all show up and they, they go to work every day and they want to be back in the NHL for a lot of them. But, you know, for Brandt, he's just excited to – he's getting a ton of minutes. He's out there uh, pretty much every other shift at this point. And so um, it, he looks great. So that's a good thing. And the, the problem is, right, like what, what's going to happen when he comes back up? It's not for me to, to really determine, uh, but it, it's definitely a little frustrating when, when you see your team's prospects kind of getting jumped around a little bit and you like to have them – in a good home. And it, so that's a little bit of frustration on maybe, you know, my, uh, my beliefs on, you know, that the CHL yeah. and NHL shouldn't be dictating uh, where players are developing. If they're good enough for, for a league, they should be there, but uh, he's been great. And it's been fun to watch him uh, for three games in Ontario so far. Yeah. I could not agree more with you on, on that point, but that's a discussion for, for another time. Yeah. Uh, one player who doesn't necessarily have the NHL in his sights at the moment is Alex Turcotte. And for him, it's just being on the ice, staying there, staying healthy. Obviously, uh, another very high draft pick, a guy that a lot of people feel feels like is an NHL caliber player at some point. But, of course, he's been dealing with the concussion issues, failed his physical, wasn't able to participate in the development camp or rookie camp for the preseason. But he's finally back on the ice, and we're all kind of keeping our fingers crossed for the best for him just to kind of get through a season, and then we'll see where it goes from there perhaps. But but how has he looked, and how is the how is he is he sh- showing any signs of – you know, being hesitant, and which, which would certainly be understandable, but has he been able to kind of get into his stride uh, quickly, or how has it gone? I think that we've seen some signs of the old Alex Turcotte. I think maybe his best game was on Sunday. I noticed a couple times that he was kind of getting back to his old way, which is to be a pest. I mean, that's kind of his game is to get under the skin of, of opponents, uh, to be pressuring teams into making turnovers. I thought he was very aggressive. In the offensive zone, he the one thing he doesn't have back yet is like his touch and his feel for things. There's a few times where he's trying to make passes that were you know too far out of reach of of his teammate, or you know maybe he shot when he should have passed, or passed when he should have shot. I think he's just getting the the feel back after missing so much time last year. After his first injury, he came back and only played about four or five games before he got hurt again. So he has really missed a lot of time. And I think you're seeing that in the timing and the touch and feel and the plays, but I don't really see that he's backing down from anybody. Uh, as Good. far as head is hesitancy. I don't see that at all. He has, I think three or four penalties where he's been the aggressor. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's trying to stand up for himself. There was a play in Henderson where um, he got into kind of a, a shoving match after, after a whistle in front of the net. And once somebody kind of, got in his way. He didn't back down. He went after that player. So I think uh, he's definitely conscious of, of that. He has had a few injuries and I think he's standing up for himself because he does not want to find himself in that spot again. Um, obviously not, nothing was his fault at this point, but I think he's just, he's definitely more aware of it, but he's taken a couple hits and he's looked okay and he's stood up for himself. So I don't see any um, lack of aggression or, or hesitancy in his game, but He's not back at 100% where he was b- before, you know, the middle of last season. I did see a couple plays, again, going back to Sunday, where I thought he, you can tell he's getting back to form on the offensive end. And he was paired up with, with Quentin Byfield, and I thought they looked pretty good uh, on the top line for the rain in that, in that win on Sunday. So definitely some positive signs. I still think he probably needs a few more weeks before we can say, hey, he's all systems go and he feels totally normal. But I think it's getting there. Well, you mentioned Quentin Byfield, obviously another very familiar name to Kings fans, another former first round pick who uh, had a flu bug or, or some sort of an illness uh, and needed to go to Ontario for um, an unofficial, I guess, conditioning assignment, get some games under his belt, get the feeling back to normal. Uh, does it look like he's uh, ready to rejoin the Kings sometime soon? I think it, I think it does. Uh, I definitely think, you know, in talking to Marco Sturm after the game on Sunday, he said he felt that Quentin's best game was Saturday. It was a loss to Henderson, but he was definitely more aggressive. He was using his speed, his skill. Uh, we're starting to see the the Quentin Byfield that everybody knows. 
Uh, so I think, yeah, he's definitely getting a lot closer. Probably just a matter of when the Kings want him. If, if they want to bring him back up this week, uh, that'd probably be an option. And, you know, he's definitely started to play some more minutes too. I think he started on the second line. Now he's been up to the first line and he's playing in all situations. He looks confident. Obviously we know the skill is there. So, uh, yeah, I think he's the, the, it's nice that they had this option to send him down and, and have him play some of these games, but also, you know, you want him to, to be back up in the NHL and be producing up in the NHL. So that's probably the next step for him. Uh, not sure when the Kings want to want to make that call, but I would definitely say it's safe to say uh, he, he'll be back up sooner than later. And one other player that was not a uh, first round pick, but has a lot of people excited and maybe some Kings fans don't know about it, but Martin Kromiak is playing his first season in Ontario. And he was a guy who was drafted later in the draft. Um, but had an incredible season last year in the uh, OHL and kind of burst on the scene. And people were talking about, oh, what a steal this guy was. I believe he had an appendectomy, though, right before the season started. And so that delayed his uh, start. How is, how is he looking so far? Yeah, he had a tough summer because he had uh, some other kind of uh, illness that had him miss the World Juniors, uh, unrelated. But, but yeah, right before the season started, wasn't feeling well. I think having that illness history – allowed our team's medical staff to kind of take it more seriously when he complained that he wasn't feeling well. And then it did let, lead to that appendectomy. So uh, definitely something that, again, totally out of his control. Unfortunate that he has had a slower start to the season. He's played in a couple games. I think, again, a guy who's just kind of working his way into the lineup. He had played in the AHL uh, a couple of years ago during the, uh, the pandemic when there was a shortened season. He had gotten a couple of games. He is another guy who's really familiar with this group. He's played in rookie tournaments, development camps. He, he knows the players. He's excited to be here. Um, I think his talent level is incredible. His shot is great. Um, it's exciting to, to have him on your team. But again, you know, we just mentioned a couple guys. There are so many players yep. that the rain lineup is filled with prospects, filled with different players. So it's just a matter for him of working his way in the lineup and earning himself some more playing time because you have a lot of guys who, you know, have earned that, have earned that already. So I think, you know, in his first game, uh, he was playing on the right wing second line and then he was on the fourth line for his second game. And, and then he was a scratch on, on Sunday. So I think, you know, it's just a matter of making sure that he's indispensable, you know, getting himself to stick in the lineup is going to mean that he needs to be playing at a high level. And I know, I think everybody knows he can do that, but you know, there's other guys that, that are also that are also very high priorities in this for this team. So I think that's a good thing. It's going to be good competition for him. But yeah, I think overall down the road, definitely an exciting prospect because of his skill, his speed, and and the way he plays the game. I think should translate pretty well at the pro level. We're going to have more with Jared Jaffron in a moment. Talk more about some names you're probably familiar with. But first, I need to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by. BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball. The World Cup is underway. Esports, they've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. It's the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to BetOnline.net today or use your mobile device to learn more. That's BetOnline, where the game starts. We got more with Jared Schaffrin from the Ontario Reign. And, uh, Jared, uh, Jordan Spence is a name a lot of Kings fans got familiar with last season. I know he's been off the charts with how fast he has pro progressed in his professional game. Um, how is the, is the progression continuing this season as well? I, I'm, I'm guessing he's taken a large role as being a number one kind of defenseman, running the power play, that kind of thing. Absolutely. And I notice it's at the next level this year. I think wow. he last year was an excellent power play quarterback for the Reign. He was playing in all situations. He he definitely progressed quickly, I think quicker than anybody would have thought, to the point where you know he was ready for the NHL by the end of the season. I don't know that anyone would have predicted that that would have been the case at the beginning of last year. But now, in a, like you said, number one role, he has really elevated his defensive game. I'm noticing much more shutdown defensive type plays from him in his own zone, whereas he was serviceable defensively before. He was certainly not a problem, but I'm noticing now he's out there against the best players on every team that the rain face, and he is doing a great job defensively. And that has translated to the entire, I mentioned the team's defense this year has been much better as a whole. And it, Jordan Spence has been a huge reason for that. 
because of the big minutes that he's playing and his effectiveness. And the great thing about Jordan Spence, if he does stop a play at one end, you know he's jumping into the rush. You know he has that offensive talent. Uh, he has been excellent for, for Ontario. And I can even say that something I've noticed in the last couple of weeks, he is much more physical as well. We've seen a couple of pretty big hits that he's thrown on some opponents. And that was not, again, not that he was shying away from physical play by any stretch, but I think now he realizes, you know what? I'm starting to get more acclimated. I'm starting to become more sure of myself, my body. And, you know, I think he's only 5'10", but he doesn't look it out there. He, he is throwing the body around. He's ending plays with physicality instead of just poking the puck away or stopping a rush. He's, he's kind of actively seeking out physical ways to end, end plays. So that's been kind of what I've noticed from him. And then the offense, you know it's going to be there. He leads the reign uh, in shots on goal this year because he's always looking to get the puck on the net. Uh, the goal the rain scored on the power play to, to lead off Sunday's game. It was deflected in by Byfield, but it was off a shot by Spence. So he is someone who's not shying away from shooting the puck, leading the team in in, in shots. And then also he's oh, he's facilitating. He's contributing. Uh, he's got 13 assists this year, just about an assist per game uh, rate right now. So I think at this point he doesn't really have much much else to prove. Uh, just got to get the, the spot to open up for him to, to be at the next level. Yeah, no doubt. Um, that's great news. I, 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 I've admitted many times that I am a uh, Jordan Spence fanboy a little bit. Uh, it's hard not to be though, with uh, what you see out of him. I think everybody is. I feel yeah. like that's what everybody said. Everybody I talk to feels that way. He's, he's a great kid off the ice, but on the ice, he just has everything. He's a great skater, shoots the puck, plays good defense, has his head up, always seems to be making the right plays. So, uh, definitely excited to see him progress. Another player I wanted to ask you about is somebody that kind of got on the radar a little bit in training camp because of um, the back surgery to Victor Arvidsson. Uh, Samuel Fugimo got a little uh, time playing on the second line in training camp with the LA Kings and played in a preseason game or two. Uh, and that got some people's attention that he would get that kind of an assignment. Uh, you know, when he's, I'm not saying he's not a highly thought of prospect, but there are obviously some, some bigger names perhaps. Um, just wondered about that and, and how he's looked so far. I think Tom McClellan's a big fan of, of Samuel Fugimo, yeah. and that's why he gets those chances. I think last year in the preseason and then during the season, he impressed Todd, and you know he scored a goal in the, the Kings versus Kings preseason scrimmage that was really, really nice goal. And I think he's kind of had the opportunity to, to impress the coaching staff for the Kings. So I definitely think he's a highly thought-of prospect in this organization. I think for him also trying to round out his game at this point, last year – uh, you know, an unbelievable season from him. He he was basically the second highest scorer after Martin Furk for Ontario and did get a look in the NHL for a couple of games. And when he was in the NHL for a couple of games last year, he was playing with Andre Kopitar, his first first uh, first game, he was on the top line. So I think that is someone, he's someone that they think highly of. I think he started off pretty hot. Uh, he got hurt and missed a couple games. And then since he's come back, he's been okay. But I think he's been having a little trouble getting his shot off for whatever reason. He is the point man on the power play. Like they're trying to get the puck to him on the power play. And he's been close. He's either just missing the net or shots getting blocked or goaltender making nice saves. So I think he's he's close to having a breakthrough, but he's been one of those guys that's been a little bit snake bit offensively over the last couple of weeks. Uh, definitely could use some more scoring out of him. He did have two assists uh, in Sunday's win. So I think – you know, another guy who is getting those chances, he's playing top six. Uh, he's getting a lot of ice time. He's doing good things, but would hope that he starts scoring a little bit more at the AHL level to, to get a chance in the NHL. Well, there were some obvious names that I had to ask you about, right? But I want to kind of turn it over to you a little bit. Is there anyone that I haven't mentioned that maybe Kings fans aren't as familiar with that have kind of stood out so far for the rain this year? Sure. I, I Like I said, it, it's been kind of, you know, I think it's been a good start for the rain in that there's been a lot of options that can take over a game. I, I think one guy who's really impressed me this year, as opposed to what we saw from him last year is Aiden Dudas. Uh, he has five goals this year and, you know, not thought of as a high end prospect necessarily for the top six, but an undersized guy that does a lot of good work and could be a fill in opportunity for him in the bottom six, if they need it down the road. Um, I think he's in a kind of a, a contract year trying to earn himself a contract for next season. 
And I think, you know, coming out of the gate, scoring five goals pretty quickly. Uh, he plays in all situations. He, he's now wearing a, a letter on his chest in some games. So he's taking a little bit more of a leadership role in the locker room. Uh, and I think Marco Sturm is kind of taking a liking to him. So he's had a really good start to his season. Akil Thomas is another guy that Kings fans might know a little bit about, former second round pick. Um, he's had a good start to the season. He's got five goals this year as well. A lot of them coming on the power play. He's kind of the guy in the bumper role in the power play. And he, when he gets a shot off, he usually doesn't miss. So he's had a really good start to the year as well, especially last season. He missed a lot of the year. He, he first had a double shoulder surgery, which had him out, missed the start of the season. And then in his second game back, he took, he blocked a shot off his foot uh, that had him out for a few more weeks. So it was just a really slow go for him last year. And to have him at full strength to start this season has been really nice for the rain. I think it's another added guy uh, up front. And then the other thing is goaltending uh, because, you know, you never know when, when you're going to need somebody. If, if there's ever an injury at the NHL level, obviously the Kings are pretty established with Jonathan Quick and Cal Peterson, but both goaltenders for the rain, I think have been outstanding this year. And who knows what, what the team's record would be if not for uh, both both goaltenders, Phoenix Copley and Matt Villalta. Copley at the beginning of the year was really hot. He kind of took the reins to start and was I think he started three out of the first four games, but then Villalta had a shutout in Colorado, and now he's kind of been more even even hot at, at down the last couple of weeks. Uh, Villalta, I believe, now top five in the AHL in both goals against and save percentage, and I think you know, the team defensively in front of them ha has been better than it was last year. And Velalta was seeing a lot more shots, a lot more high quality opportunities last year than he has been this year, but uh, both goalies and, and, you know, even recently too, they've kept them in games. They've been making great saves. So that's been definitely a strong point for the rain. And they've now been able to split them, the goaltenders pretty evenly, which has kept them fresh. And, you know, I've got to think that Phoenix Copley is your, is your first call-up option if the Kings needed somebody. But Matt Volalt is pushing him, and that's good to have because I think after those two, you know, David Rennick is the only other goaltender playing in North America right now. He's down in the ECHL with the Greenville Swamp Rabbits. The goaltending depth in the organization is not, not very deep right now. There's not a ton of prospects. So to have two guys that are both playing well at the AHL level is pretty nice. We'll have a closing thought with Jared Shafford in a moment, uh, but I do need to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Simply Safe. Did you know that over the holidays, property crimes like burglary and package theft spike nationally? That's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off their award winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure this holiday season. Order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security at gr and greater peace of mind this holiday season. It's very cool. You can control your system from your phone with an app that's got crystal clear HD live streaming of all the security cameras. If you can't watch, no problem. They've got 24 seven professional monitoring agents using fast protect technology exclusively from Simple Safe to capture critical evidence and verify any threats. They even have hazard sensors to detect fires or floods or any other threats to your home. So don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system that I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL today. That is the biggest discount of the year. So don't wait at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There is no safe like Simply Safe. All right, we uh, wrap it up with uh, Jared Schaffer. And Jared, again, really appreciate the time. Some great knowledge. I do want to ask you, though, about a name you just mentioned a moment ago, and that is Marco Sturm, the former LA Kings assistant coach, now in his first season as head coach of the Ontario Reign. Just uh, wonder how things are going for him. Uh, I know he's coached, been a head coach at other levels, but not at the AHL level before. How are things going with him as his first year there? I think they're going well. I think there's a lot of benefits in having him run this team. Number one, he's incredibly familiar with the system that the Kings run at the NHL level and what Todd McClellan expects from Kings players. So he can speak directly to a player and say, if you don't, if you're not playing this way, you're not going to play for Todd McClellan. And, and th they can know that he's, he's, he's definitely speaking the truth. So that's really good to have that can, you know, really continuancy of, of passing along the systems. Um, the, the interesting thing for him is he's never been at the AHL really. So he doesn't, you know, the AHL, a little bit different than the NHL, obviously about as close as you can get to the NHL, but still not the same. So the way things are being officiated, uh, the way things are that are, you know, there's just a little bit of getting used to that level. So it's been fun to 
uh, kind of help him out and, and make sure that he's up to speed on, on everything. But I think what he brings is he is an NHL style coach. So I think, you know, for him, he's going to, his whole vision is how can we get as many players from the rain to be ready and then stepping into the lineup at the NHL level. And I think the rain had that last year. There was a ton of guys that stepped in for the Kings and made a big impact and, and really helped the Kings to a, ser- a season where they ended up qualifying for the playoffs. And I think this year there haven't been as many opportunities for guys to get called up, which is great because that means players are healthy. And that means things are going okay. But, you know, as you get through the season, you want to make sure that if the Kings need anybody, they're ready. And nobody understands what it needs to be what what it really you need to do to be ready at the NHL level than Marco Sturm. He's played in the league. He's coached in the league. He completely has the knowledge of, of everything that you would need to know. So for I think for our players, they're very comfortable with him. A lot of them were playing for the Kings at one point in their career, so maybe he have had him on the bench previously with the Kings. So they're very comfortable. Uh, I think he's very approachable. Guys have questions about where they need to be, what they need to do. There's been no issues. And, you know, even with a guy like Brent Clark or, you know, Quentin Byfield, Alex Turcotte, guys who are jumping into the lineup for the first time in the last couple of weeks. I mean, for Brent Clark, I think things have been very seamless. And I think that's a credit to Marco and his coaching staff for, you know, no matter who's coming, coming down or who's on the roster, they're getting them what they need to know extremely quickly, having them, you know, expectations are known up front and everybody's been really comfortable. So that hasn't really been, any issue. And, and I think, you know, it's exciting to have a coach like that, uh, a high, high quality caliber coach at the, at the AHL level. That is Jared Schaffron. He is manager of communications and content for the Ontario rain. Jared, it was our first chance to get to talk, really enjoyed it. Great information. And uh, hope we can definitely do it again sometime later in the season to check on how, how the rain and some of the Kings prospects are doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Come, I'll uh, join anytime. Okay. Thank you, Jared. Take, take it easy. Have and happy holidays. Thanks very much. You too. All right. We thank uh, Jared Schaffer for joining us. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. Really appreciate his time. Want to remind you coming up on Wednesday show, we're going to recap the Kings game against the New York Rangers and see if they are uh, back on track now that they're back at home. If you want to send me an email on anything that's going on with the show or the Kings, the email address is locked on Eddie at gmail.com. We are on Twitter at locked on LA Kings. Of course, there's an Instagram page as well. Locked on LA Kings as well. Thank you for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen. For your next listen, check out Locked on Sports Today, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day, available on the Audacity app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thanks for listening and watching the Locked on LA Kings. And as always, we close out the show by saying, Go Kings Go!